So here we are given a business rule, might be a business rule in a university kind of a setting. Of course, we'll find, a, find lots of business rules in a university setting, hundreds of rules. Here we are looking at just one rule and how we might translate that business rule into, to, into an entity relationship diagram. Okay. So we, as we say here, a student might be assigned a laptop and each laptop might be assigned to a student. Okay. That's what we are talking about. So in this business or in this organization, there are things called students and there are things called laptops and there's a connection between them as well. Students may be given laptops and a laptop might be assigned to a student. So if you look at it, our situation might look like this. There are four students we take and we are indicating each student just by the name of the student, although we know that we have to represent them by their IDs. But let's assume that these are four distinct students and there are three different laptops. Okay. The, here we are talking about instances. This is not an entity relationship diagram. I'm just explaining the concept. Now, the scenario also says that laptops might be assigned to students. Okay, so let's say Jill, these are the students, these are the laptops. And let's say Jill Jones is assigned laptop 2, Robert Yu is assigned laptop 3, and George Ramos has laptop 1. Now, what happened to Vladimir Khalifman? No laptop has been assigned to Vladimir Khalifman. Why? Because the business rule says a student might be assigned a laptop. We are not saying every student has to be, must be assigned a laptop. No. The business rule says, well, there might be some students to whom we don't give laptops for whatever reason. Okay. And we are also saying that every laptop need not be assigned to a student. There may be some laptops. For example, they may keep some spare laptops or some laptops may be assigned to administrators. It's not assigned to a student, right? So it is possible that you may have laptops which are not assigned to students and you may have students who don't have laptops. I'm sorry, uh, I misspoke. The business rule says each laptop must be assigned to a student. Okay, that's, that's the business rule. Doesn't make sense, but that's what the business rule seems to be. And that is why you see every laptop here has been assigned to some student or other because that's what the business rule says. Okay. So here I just wanted to explain, this is not an entity relationship diagram. This diagram is just showing you entity instances and explaining what we mean by these kinds of business rules. Okay. So let's see how this proceeds. So you've got entity types. Clearly in this scenario, we can think of two entity types that we have identified. And those are student and laptop. Those are the two entity types that we have identified. But these two entity types are not independent of each other. They're not sitting out there with no connection. There's a strong connection between these two entity types because instances have are connected to each other. Laptops are assigned to students. The two are not unrelated. And therefore, we say that these two entity types have a relationship okay now not all entity types may be related to each other or alternately we may not be interested in all the relationships that exist in a situation but here this is a relationship with which we are possibly concerned we want to keep track of this relationship okay so that's what the diagram shows as the entity types uh, entity instances Okay, so we do have uh, laptops, and this is a, this is a mistake. We, we we don't have laptops not assigned to students. All the laptops have been assigned to students, so that's a small mistake. So we've got the student entity type, we've got the laptop entity type, and I just made up the attributes. The description didn't tell us the attributes, but I just made up some attributes. Okay, so those are the two entity types we have identified by looking at this particular situation. And the two are not unrelated. They are connected to each other. And therefore, we show the relationship between these two entity types by kind of drawing a line between them. Okay. So we draw a line between entities which are connected to each other. Of course, we don't always draw a solid line. There are some more nuances that we'll be looking at shortly. But for now, let's just assume that a line is what indicates a relationship between entity types. 
This re relationship happens to be a so-called one-to-one relationship because the business rule says every student might be assigned one laptop and every laptop is assigned to one student. Okay, so it's one, one. One of this instance, uh, instance of this entity type is connected to one entity instance of this entity type. Okay, it cannot be connected to more. For example, one student as per our business rule cannot be given many laptops and as per our business rule one laptop cannot be assigned to many students. Okay, so the upper limit for the number of entities uh, instances that one entity type can be connected to uh, one entity instance of one type can be connected to it's the upper limit is one on both sides. So we call this a one to one relationship. Okay, now this relationship notation is tentative. We will be refining it as we go forward, but relationships are indicated by drawing lines. But we'll see some nuances as we go further. Okay, so that's in fact an example of a simple entity relationship diagram. This part alone is the entity relationship diagram showing the entities and the relationship, the entity types and the relationship. It's a one to one relationship, right? As I've already pointed out. One student cannot be assigned more than one laptop and a laptop cannot be assigned to more than one student. So it's a one to one relationship. Now clearly we saw two things here, right? We saw this diagram on top and then we saw the diagram on the bottom. The diagram on the bottom is the entity relationship diagram. And in this diagram, this is not an entity relationship diagram. This, this diagram actually shows specific instances. Okay. And I drew this just for clarity to give you the concepts. This is the entity relationship diagram and an entity relationship diagram or ER diagram only shows entity types. It's not concerned with entity instances. Instances are not shown at all on an entity relationship diagram shows only entity types. Okay. And this is what we are concerned about. We talk to the business people or organization people, understand their requirements and draw an entity relationship diagram, which we then say convert into tables that we will then use. So the tables that we use were created by using this process. The tables that we used for SQL for practicing as well as in the exam, those tables were arrived at by this kind of a process of first drawing an entity relationship diagram and then finding what are the tables we need. Okay, once again, I'm just clarifying that the notation is still not complete. Slowly, we'll refine our notation. Okay, your turn. Another example, a professor might be assigned an office. Each office might be assigned to a professor. So I want you to draw an entity relationship diagram just like we did in the previous slides for this. Again, as usual, please pause the video, take a look at the previous example and draw a diagram for this scenario. You can make up your own attributes for the entity types because I have not told you what are the attributes. So your first step is to identify the entity types and give them some attributes. Of course, every entity type must have a primary key. So don't forget that and then show the relationship. Nothing very complicated. Okay, so example, Professor X is assigned to Office 101. Professor Y, assuming that you know, uh, these are the ways but that uniquely identify these uh, entity types. Okay, Professor Z is not assigned any office and offices 302 and 747 have also not been assigned to any professors. That's just an example of a situation that conforms to this description that we have given. Okay, so pause, draw your entity relationship diagram and then compare it with what I'll be showing once you restart the video. Okay, and again, like I said, show the instances, how they are related, also show the entity relationship diagram. Is this a one-to-one -one relationship? So this could be an example. You've got three profs. In fact, this example is mirroring what is shown here. You've got professors who don't have offices, offices which don't have professors, which is fine because it says a professor might be assigned an office. Not all professors are assigned offices. 
and each office might be assigned to a professor so some offices might not be assigned to professors okay so this instance scenario that I have pointed here again this is not an ER diagram this conforms to what is shown here the ER diagram we arrived at would look something like this okay I, I didn't make up the attributes for the offices I just put dot 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 but you can see you, you get the idea okay some of the office attributes might be the office ID and uh, you know office uh, room number what is the square footage of the office etc etc those could all be attributes of office so the answer to the question is this is your entity relationship diagram that captures this information and another part of the question was is this a one-to-one -one relationship now as per the description every professor might be assigned an office not multiple offices right we are saying every professor might be assigned an office right one office not more and each office might be assigned to a professor not more not many professors right so this clearly is another example of a one-to-one -one relationship again relationship notation is still not complete we'll refine it as we go forward another example a student might be assigned a laptop and each laptop might be assigned to a student this is something we've seen before and this is what leads to this top portion of our entity relationship diagram student with the attributes laptop with the attributes and a line showing that they are indeed connected to each other there is there is a relationship between students and laptops to the same scenario I am adding one more relationship we are saying each student is assigned a dorm room and each dorm room might be assigned to a student in other words I am introducing a third entity type into this scenario that of dorm room and showing how that connects to this scenario to the existing diagram okay so the point I'm trying to make here is when you draw an entity relationship diagram you'll end up with many many entities entity types that is and they will be connected in all different ways to many of the other entity types they'll have lots of relationships right so here I'm just showing you the example with three and uh, you know a student may even have many other relationships if there are then there would be lines going off from all over the place connecting to student okay so point is an entity type need not have relationships only with one other entity type entity types can have relationships to many other entity types okay so ER diagrams can show many entities and their relationships or entities or entity types and their relationships again the notation for relationship is not yet complete we, we are coming up with the complete notation shortly okay here's another example we are saying each laptop might be assigned to an employee for maintenance and each employee might be assigned to maintain many laptops okay so once again this is uh, uh, the entity types involved here are employee and laptop and I've given some attributes for each of these made some of them optional some of them required but the twist here is earlier we saw a student could be assigned only one laptop and a laptop could only be assigned to one student but here our scenario says an employee can be assigned many laptops right each employee might be assigned to maintain many laptops but each laptop can be assigned to only one employee for maintenance okay so this is an example of a one-to-many relationship or sometimes called as one to n relationship and how is that represented in our notation well notice this notation here it's called the crow foot notation this is what says that one employee could be related to many laptops right so on the many side of a one-to-many relationship you put the crow foot to indicate that that can be many whereas one laptop can only be related to one employee an employee may be related to many laptops so when you're reading a relationship you should you can actually read it both ways you can start from employee go towards laptop or start from laptop go towards employee okay so when you start from employee you say one employee can be connected to many laptops 
one laptop can be connected to one employee at most, right? So when you're reading the relationship, you have to look at the name of the entity type and then look at whether it's one or many on the other side, whether there's a crew foot on the other side or not. One employee, many laptops. One laptop, one employee. That's what it is. So this is a one to many relationship. One to many relationship. It doesn't matter where the many is. It's still called a one to many relationship. You don't say many to one relationship. You don't need to. It's just a one to many relationship. Okay, that's important to understand. Again, our notation is still not complete. We've introduced the line and we've introduced the crow foot, but our notation is still not fully complete. Okay, so this is just showing you the thing and it's emphasizing the fact that the crow foot notation is what is used on the many side of a one to many relationship. So when we talk about one to one, one to many relationships, that's called as the degree of the relationship. Okay, it's called the degree of the relationship. Is it a one to one relationship or a one to many relationship? That one to one or one to many is the degree of the relationship. And you find out by asking the question, one instance of each entity type can be associated with at most how many of the other type. That is, we are looking at the upper limit. Okay, it is possible that a student may not be assigned a laptop at all. That is possible, but we are not worried about that. We are saying a student can be given a maximum of how many laptops. Okay, an instructor can teach a maximum of how many courses. An employee can be assigned a maximum of how many laptops. Okay, and by maximum, we are not interested in a specific number. We just want to know, is that maximum one or is that maximum more than one? That's all. We are not interested in oh, the maximum is five or the maximum is four. We are not really interested in that. It's either one or many or n. That's it. Okay, so that is how you find out the degree of a relationship. Okay, so here I'm just putting down here what questions would you ask to find out the degree of a relationship. So here you've got an entity relationship with diagram with two entity types A and B. And what is the degree of the relationship? You will find that out by asking a question. One instance of A can be related to at most how many instances of B? That is, is, is it true that one instance of A can only be related to one instance of B? Or can it be related to more than one instance of B? Similarly, can one instance of B be related to how many instances of A? Again, is it one or many? That's all we're interested in, okay? If both are one, then it's a one-to-one -one relationship. In other words, if one instance of A can only be related to one instance of B, and one instance of B can only be related to one instance of A at most, then it's a one-to-one -one relationship. In other words, the answer to both the questions is one, then it's a one-to-one -one relationship. If the answer to one of them is one, and the answer to the other is more than one, it doesn't matter which one, then you call it a one-to-many relationship. Okay. Sometimes you will find that in both the cases, it can be multiple, right? In other words, you can say a student can take many sections and each section can have many students. Okay. So it can be many, both on both sides, in which case you say the relationship is a many to many relationship or an M to N relationship. Okay. That's just the notation for degree of a relationship. Okay, so it can be one to one, one to many, many to many. Those are the three types of degree relationships. Consider one more example. Let's say in this example, we are saying a student might be assigned a laptop and each laptop might be assigned to a student. Okay, so we are saying might be. That means the student need not necessarily be assigned a laptop, might be assigned. And the next one we are saying each student is assigned a dorm room and each dorm room must might be assigned to a student. So in other words, we are saying every student is definitely given a dorm room, but a dorm room may not be assigned to a student. Okay, that means there could be some dorm rooms which are not assigned to students. Okay, another example, each laptop must be assigned to an employee for maintenance. So every laptop must have an associated employee, but 
and every employee might be assigned to maintain zero or more laptops. That is, you have every laptop is connected to an employee, but every employee may not be connected to laptops, but might be connected to lots of laptops also, zero or more, right? So here, if you look at this situation and draw the complete entity relationship diagram, then you see it like this. You say student to laptop, okay? So student has connection with laptop. That's a one-to-one. -one. We've seen that before. Every student might be assigned a laptop and each laptop might be assigned to a student, but so maximum is only one. So that's a one-to-one. -one. Student is assigned a dorm room and each dorm room is assigned to a student. Again, it's one-to-one. -one. Each student may get one dorm room at most. It definitely is assigned a dorm room and every dorm room might be assigned to a student, but only one student. Okay, so here this DOM room ID has sort of scrolled off. It should not have scrolled off. I should make the diagram a little bigger. I'll do that. Okay, but the DOM room can be assigned to at most one student. Every student is assigned exactly one DOM room, another one-to-one -one relationship. Okay, laptop to employees, we've already seen that it's a one-to-many relationship. Each employee might be assigned multiple laptops. Each laptop is assigned to an employee. Again, we are drawing here, we are only talking about the upper limits. Okay, so by now, I think it's pretty clear that when you have a set of business rules, like the kind we are looking at here, we can convert that into a corresponding entity relationship diagram. So the process of database design is first to understand the business rules, to ask the questions of the people in the business, and then document your understanding in the form of an entity relationship diagram like this. And then take this entity relationship diagram, convert it into tables. That's the process of database design. We've still not completely looked at the proper relationship notation. We'll start that shortly.